Are we live? Oh, it's already lagging. Ooh, that's not good. Oh man, I noticed it was lagging last stream too. I think it's because I don't know for some reason it, my computer stopped letting like streams happen easy. Oh, shout out to Aaron, and I learned how to say your name now. It's to me. Got that. Okay, but I think I might have to turn down the stream quality to 720 because it's a little bit laggy. Unless, hold on, let me turn off Discord. Maybe that'll help. Let's see. Okay, I turned off Discord. Uh, it's a little bit better. Yikes. All right, I'm just going to read the comments off my phone and I'm going to close it down to Chrome too because Chrome eats up computer a lot oh we got six people in here now nine people all right you guys can see the topics oh let me just turn down that that's an ad uh topics are right here on the screen uh i got that um all locked down let's take a look at the chat what's the chat saying where's the chat voice working fine video like five fps okay it should be fixed now um hey paul Hi, Jacob. Just going to be waiting for you guys to get in here. Uh, we'll wait maybe like four more minutes and then I'll get into all the different topics. So, um, yeah, the videos are up there. And then Fixed CX. FCA. What's up, FCA? Um... Every, most of the people, oh, we got 18, oh, wow, people are coming in now, Keith, Kenneth, the DJ, Ali, um, most of the people know that the live stream is happening because of Discord, so if you guys are not on my Discord server, check out the link in the description below, uh, I love the community there, I love talking to you guys, I talk uh, with the Discord people throughout the day, so I usually respond pretty quick, pretty quick to the people on the Discord, so... Uh, join there and also I ask you guys for help with projects so it's another way that we can communicate and it's better than the form in my opinion because we can all get like instant responses all right Tyler respect what's up Thomas hi from Italy what up uh, Sanjay uh, hello Mickey hi FCA I should rename myself to FCA yes do it no, I'm just kidding all right we got 18 people in here uh, Paul said we'll check discord out yes which is actually my first topic that I want to talk about is I want you guys to like be more involved with the channel I want it to be more of like a community effort so like right now with well the power strip but like with uh, I forget who, uh, Threadripper on the discord forum he's making a uh, a lock a magnetic lock so that way we can control the doors and so you can open and close doors and stuff so that's his project that he's working on so if you guys have any projects that you guys are working on and want to show the uh, community and want me to do a guide on I'd be happy to do it and maybe we'll even put it up on my store so that way more people can enjoy it so that way your work is more out there for everyone um, and so that way we can make guides we can have more videos because there's a lot of like cool things out there that people are doing but there's not really a source where they can like uh, show it to everybody like for example with uh, Dr. Z's and um, has uh, has panel I think it was uh, he showcased that on his channel and it's helping um, I think it was Luma helping Luma out so like I kind of want to do the same thing and uh, you guys were coming to me with like cool like device ideas so if you guys want to make a device let me know and we'll talk about it in the discord uh, let's see here what else? That was one of the things. All right, so let's just get right into the topics for today. Uh, first one is Lux Mounts Mondays. I missed last Monday because I was... It's The next Lux Mounts Monday is going to be about Fully Kiosk. And so I was talking to the Fully Kiosk uh, developer, and so we were working out a couple things. I was asking questions. So that's why I skipped last Monday because I want to get the guy down perfect. Because Fully is the... First step to getting hab panel on the Lux mounts, which are right here, if you see it right there, or wall mounted tablets or any wall mounted tablets. Oh, Siri activated. Um, yeah, so the Amazon Fire tablets, wall mounted, 
fully kiosk. That's the first step to hab panel. And I believe for the Home Assistant version, it's called, oh, I forget what it's called. Uh, remind me in the chat what the Home Assistant version of hab panel is called. But basically that's the first step because it's cool because you can have like a screensaver. And when you walk up to it, it goes from the screensaver to your uh, control of your smart home. Let's see what the chat's saying. Uh, Aaron, you got a mic and I can chat with you more about HA on one day on Discord. All right, Aaron. Uh, integration delayed siren trigger with door and window sensor. Have you tried Shelly relays uh, are a deal breaker? I have not tried out Shelly yet. I've heard, I've heard about it, but I haven't tried it out yet. All right, let's see here. What else is on the list? We got MQTT 2.4. So I'm... I was supposed to release a video yesterday, but some things came up and so I couldn't finish it. So I think I'm either gonna do that video today or tomorrow. And that one has to do with this PCB right here. Uh, we'll get into where I got this PCB from later. But that's gonna be tomorrow's video. Um, but then next week, next Thursday, we're gonna be doing uh, MQTT binding 2.4 on OpenHab. I saw that BK did a stream on it. Uh, I want to do my own personal take on it in my own personal video, so it'll be condensed down to like 10 minutes, so that way you guys have like a quick way on how to like upgrade to the MQTT binding 2.4, and uh, which one is better, and all the details about that, so that'll be next uh, week's video. Uh, Lovelace, Lovelace, no, 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 it, the other one, not Lovelace, Love, the, um, the one for tablets, the one where you can like customize it. Uh, let's see here. I forget what it's called. It's on my, hold on. I know where I have it. Let me look it up real quick. How many people we got in the stream? Let me check real quick. We only got 22. Okay, so maybe this isn't such a good time to stream. Uh, let's see here. I have the name of the one on, hold on real quickly. I forgot the name. All right, maybe I don't have it written down, but yeah, uh, HA dashboard. That's what it was. Thank you to uh, FCA and Paul. You guys are right. It's called HA dashboard. So I want to do videos on that with those are going to be some Lux Mounts Mondays. All right, let's see here. So yeah, MQTT binding 2.4 because with the devices now since, okay, first let me like express how awesome MQTT binding 2.4 is and how you can set up all your MQTT devices through paper UI, which in my opinion, I think it puts OpenHab a little bit above Home Assistant because in Home Assistant, you can't do that yet. In Home Assistant, you still have to do it through your configuration.yaml file, whereas in, unless I'm wrong, so which you guys will obviously correct me in the chat, but with OpenHab, it, I was playing around with it because I was playing around with these uh, Tuya plugs. I have a stack of four of them because I was trying to configure it and so it required MQTT and so I started playing around with the MQTT binding 2.4. It's really nice. I am a big fan of it. It's amazing. You can put in your topic, your state topic, all right there, and you don't have to open any configuration files. Crazy. So OpenHab is doing something good. Um, let's see here. Oh, so Tuya, yeah, that brings me to my next point. So all my devices that I'll be showing you guys how to do and connect, including like these ones from companies. This is called the Zuzi smart plug. Uh, there you go. Zuzi. And so this one, we have flash thanks to, um, DigiBlur. He made a video, which I'll dive more into two weeks from now after we do the MQTT video. And so he shows how to flash these with uh, Tasmoda. So that way we can connect these normally through MQTT and we don't have to use the Tuya, bind Tuya binding, which I could not get the Tuya binding to work. I got it working on Home Assistant, but I couldn't get it working on OpenHab. All right, so that's that, so Tuya. And then I also wanna do a video on the Sonoff Touch because I wanna start getting more smart switches which is another thing that we're going to be talking about later, but I want to get those down because that's also a highly requested video, how to do the sound off touches. All right. And uh, let's take a look quickly at the chat. 
Have you done something with the information about the V2 firmware? Uh, I looked at it and I played around with it a little bit, but I haven't gone too much in detail. Thomas. FCA. Home Assistant has MQTT Discovery. Open App probably has that too if your device supports it. Okay. Hello everyone from South Texas. What's up, Charlie? Your thoughts on Lowe's discontinuing their Iris products by 31st of March. Oh, I didn't even know that. Hmm. I don't know Lowe's. Was, I I, I kind of did because I saw a lot of their stuff was going on clearance because I'm in, I sometimes go to Lowe's. So I see their stuff is on clearance and it's for pretty cheap. But it's probably because it's in a box store and it's very expensive for what it is. So I don't think that resonates well with people. Uh, I think you should get an overhead cam. Yeah, for live streams. See, the thing with the overhead cam is my computer barely handles this uh, webcam right here. So I don't think it would handle two cameras that well. All right. Oh, let's just refresh this really quickly. All right. What's next? Giveaway winners. So those of you that didn't know, I did a giveaway on the Sonoff Power Strip Kit. So that way you can make your own, not Power Strip, Power Plug. So you can make your own one of these. Uh, it the kit is for a DIY kit for this portion. It doesn't come with the ends. So the winner for this one was, let me quickly look it up. It's going to start lagging really quickly because I need to open up Google Chrome. Two seconds, guys. Bear with me. Get a new computer. It's not necessarily the computer. It's because I didn't optimize it that well, and there's some, like, programs running in the background it's, I don't know and I also need more RAM but it's a Mac so you can't upgrade the RAM I don't know and it's not in the budget to get a new computer gotta sell more kits on MK Smart House uh, let's see here so the winner for actually let me just take a screenshot okay the power strip kit the winner for oh not power strip shoot yes I know it's in slow motion I'm so sorry guys it's lagging a lot bear with me for two more seconds guys wow 757 entries into this giveaway all right so the winner for the there you go it should fix now so the winner for the power or the Sonoff single plug kit is Martin Paul Pat Schneider. So congratulations to you, man. I will be reaching out to you via email on uh, getting your address. And so that way I can ship to you the device. Uh, and the, oh shoot, it didn't transition. There you go. So that is the winner of the Sonoff um, power plug kit. Uh, and that that is a direct screenshot from the Gleam page. So that's you, man. I believe he's from Austria. Okay, and now the next person. This is for the, I think it's the power strip kit. Oh, let me just transition real quick. This is for the universal power strip, which... I'll be talking more about later because I got some backlash from that. But once it's all fixed, the winner for that is Thomas Bohr. Congratulations, you won the Universal Power Strip Kit. So that way you can make a Universal Power Strip. I'll be reaching out to you also via email for your address so that way I can send it to you. And then lastly, we have the Lux Mounts Monday giveaway, which happens every Monday. I actually have to reset that so that way you guys can enter again. So yes, you guys can keep entering for the Lux Mounts Monday uh, monthly giveaways. And the winner of the Lux Mounts, it's a Lux Mounts, so that way you can wall mount it, and the Amazon Fire tablet. Uh, the winner of that is Michael Wang. Congratulations, you are the winner of the Amazon Fire tablet and the Lux Mounts. So basically, you won one of those right there. I should probably check the chat. All right. Uh, let's see. What time is it there? Right now it is 6.45 p.m. 
yeah. So uh, those of you that don't know, every month I do a Lux Mounts giveaway. And if I'm making a device that month, then I also give that away. So look out for future giveaways. I don't really advertise it that much because I want to give back to you guys. So only the people that actually watch my videos have a chance to win. And I think it worked pretty well. We got 700 entries. So you had a very good chance. So, but I think it was only 143 people. But you can get multiple entries by like subscribing, following on Twitter, and doing a bunch of things. All right, so congratulations to you guys. I'll be reaching out to you via email. All right, speaking of the power strip. Now, so, yep, I got some backlash on the power strip that I showed you guys how to make. Uh, a lot of you called it uh, dangerous, unsafe, and if you guys want to have a good time, go read the comments of that video. It's very entertaining. Yeah. Felt great reading that. But no, in all seriousness, uh, thank you guys for pointing it out to me. And since then, I have been talking to uh, Javank. Javank? I still don't know how to say your name, dude. Uh, Javank on my Discord server. And he is, he actually just finished creating the new Power Strip board. So this one is much safe, safer. It has double galvanic isolation. It has the cutouts in the PCB so it separates um, from the high power to low voltage stuff. So it's all safe and all done and it's actually the same dimensions as the old one. So it still fits in a nice, nice enclosure or the nice blue enclosure. But speaking of PCBs guys, gotta plug PCB away. They are amazing. So I finished this PCB design probably, uh, let's just say on Friday. And then I put in my order and I already had it by Tuesday. So that, and they're in China. So their speed and how fast they do their PCBs is absolutely crazy. And it's awesome. I love the PCB. I, I kind of messed up the PCB in my design. You guys will see it in today or tomorrow's video. But I fixed it and it still works. The PCB still works fantastically. So it's not PCB waste fault. It's my fault. I designed it wrong. Uh, what's new? But you guys will know more about it later. So, bam, PCB way. You guys can check it out right there. Uh, if you use the code on the screen right here, you can get five dollars on PCB way, and their PCBs are already cheap. So you're gonna get a fantastic deal, guys. And they're one of the best. I've used a couple PCB manufacturers. I'm not gonna name any names, but PCB way is a very, very high competitor and very good PCB. So check them out. And I think, oh, I should probably take Michael Wang's name off the screen. And so I thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring this live stream and helping out the channel. Uh, without PCB Way, I don't know if this could all be possible. And they just make absolutely high quality PCBs. So I'm glad that I can promote a product that I actually like. Um, oh, and if you guys want to do see the new uh, Power Strip PCB, there's a thread on the Discord, and if you scroll through there, you'll see Javank's design. So if you want to judge for yourself if it's safe or not, check it out on the Discord. Or even if you search the Discord for Power Strip, you'll find it. All right. Let's take a look at the... I have my phone here because I have the chat on there. All right, let's see here. Congrats, don't take it to heart, Aaron. Yeah, I know, Aaron. A, is that power strip you showed on Snap? Uh, on Snap, no, that was not the power strip. That was this. This is tomorrow's video. The people, uh, them people, okay. Aaron, we're, we're good. I appreciate it. Uh, the DJ said, great service and speed for PCB. Yeah, I was shocked at how fast I got it. FCA said, can you show us the new PCB design or send it to Discord? It's on the Discord right now. And if you want to know more about it, ask Javank. Very awesome. Thank you, Javank, very much. Um, do you about any IP cameras that you don't have to buy a cloud storage? Yes. I'm going to get to that. It's the sixth bullet point. Uh, damn, that's quick. Will probably be a month to the UK. No. If you... Oh, because the UK has worse customs. Oh, it might be. Check it out. I mean, you don't have too much to risk because you have the code right here. So you'll get $5. And it, for some PCBs, if you have 
10 PCBs are $5, so you can get them for free and you'll just have to pay for shipping. Well, also, UK has import and VAT, so just check it out in their price calculator. Uh, Kenneth says, oh, okay, Eskel said, where are you in the schedule? What do you mean schedule? Do you mean, Eskel, what do you mean by schedule? Oh, which bullet points? Uh, we are on, we just finished number three, and I just gave a quick shout out to PCB Way. Which, actually, let me give another shout out, because everything that I'm talking about here, the people on my Instagram already knew about, because I've been showing pictures and teasers on my Instagram. So if you guys are not following me on Instagram, it's at MK Smart House. It's right here. I, I've been actually posting more and more on Instagram because I love like sharing all the new things that I got that I'm going to be showing on the channel. Uh, I didn't I didn't show this yet, but I did show the server that I'm going to be using for my IP cameras. I showed these plugs a while ago. So if you guys want some um, behind the scenes stuff, check out my Instagram. Uh, do you read everything in the chat out loud? Well, I mean, I don't have that quick of a chat, so, and that was asked from Guy from He. I don't have too many people talking in the chat because it's not a good time, so I might as well shout you guys out. Current schedule, 3.5. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, next up, so we just covered the power strip. Next, we're going to move on to the thermostat. So one of the biggest things that I've wanted to do at my house is the Wi-Fi thermostat, but I never, I don't, I can't justify spending $250 for a Nest thermostat. That's just like, it's a little tiny screen on the wall with a little dial. Like, I can't justify spending $250 for that. It doesn't make any sense to me. So what I want to do is make my own super cheap Wi-Fi thermostat that you guys can also replicate. And so to do that, I found these displays. These are called, what are they called? Nextian, Nextion, but this is a 3.2 inch touch screen and it only has four pins that come out of it. So what I was thinking of doing is taking one of these, connecting it to an ESP8266, then connecting three relays to it, and but basically making my own smart thermostat that's Wi-Fi controlled with a full, it's actually a bigger display than the Nest, Full control, full digital, full Wi-Fi, and that works with OpenHab and Home Assistant, and all through MQTT. And I was also thinking about having light sensors, so that way it detects the light, and so it'll turn on and off the screen based on that. And it'll have a DHT22, so it'll be the most accurate uh, temperature and humidity you can possibly have. And what else? Yeah, so I want to do that, and I think we can bring the project down to a very good price and I'll obviously be making a kit so that way you guys can replicate it too so that way if you guys wanted a Wi-Fi thermostat but didn't want to spend $250 and wanted it connected to open and home assistant you guys can also do that too because like I've always wanted that but I can't justify spending $250 on a thermostat so but in order to do this I, I want I want you guys to help me with this like I want this to be a community project So I want your input on the project itself. I want if you guys are good at uh, Software so Android uh, not Android Arduino if you guys are good at Arduino or PCB designs or hardware designs Please join the discord server and help me out. I mean I could do this on my own but like now with school and MK smart house and Lux Mounts and like YouTube and making two videos a week now it's getting a lot of things to do so I kind of want your help and also your help will make the device better because I know what you guys want um, so if you guys have any experience in Arduino or PCB design and want to help out with this project join the discord server and together we can make a pretty awesome device and share it with the community uh, let's see here yeah but in general also if you guys are good have your own projects like I mentioned before Share it on the Discord, and I'd love to do a guide on it. Okay. Uh, followed you on Instagram. Thank you, the DJ, for following on Instagram. Um, oh, FCA said, uh, not sure how that works in the UK, but Germany, the customs only apply for 26 pounds and above. Oh, so you, so you can probably get it for, it'll go through customs with no fee. Uh, Paul says through open therm. 
what do you mean? See, I, I forget. I think it might have even been you. But like open therm, how is that like an open source thermostat? I'm assuming by the name. But like I saw it was like a little device, but it didn't have a touch screen. Is there a way that we can use that and use the touch screen? Let me know. Join the Discord. I'll have to create a new new uh, thread or topic. I don't know what it's called in Discord for the thermostat. Ooh, can't wait. I have one 2.4 inch. Yeah, it is 3.2, dude. It'll be bigger. You may want to look at going with ESP32. Not much more expensive, but better processor. Yeah, but the ESP32s are also just a little bit more expensive. But we don't need Bluetooth, and it'll be lower power. And I think the ESP... I actually ordered an ESP32. I actually have no experience with the 32, so I'll have to start looking into that, but I think the ESP-8266 would be fine for this. But we'll look into it. We'll see what the community wants. Uh, have you looked into NetAmmo cameras? I have not. That would be a cool thermostat, right? I'm excited for this. This is actually one of the biggest things. I thought of this in 2018, and I just have not got around to doing it, and I really want to do this. Um, Dr. Z did some kind of thermostat, but not with a screen. Yeah, I saw his video. That's where I got a little bit of a little bit of knowledge that combined with other people, other sources. But with him, it was uh, the three relays and a DHT22. So I want to do that along with the touchscreen on top of it and with a light sensor. Shout out at Dr. Z's, by the way. Um, why light sensor? I mean, the display must go on all the time. A distance sensor would be better. Um, like I said, FCA, we can, we can discuss about all of this in the discord. So I'd love to see, maybe we won't even use it. Are we going to be using dimming? I'm not sure. All right. So that's for the thermostat. Now, the next thing that I want to do is a Wi-Fi switch. So one of the biggest things with Lux mounts right now is people are complaining about the wire that goes, uh, from the tablet to the outlet, which for me, it's fine. It doesn't bother me. Mine is more functionality over how it looks. But yeah, I care a little bit about how it looks, which is why I did a white wire instead of a black one. So it kind of looks nice. But anyway, so people have been um, complaining about that. And so I'd love to solve that problem. And so one thing that I did think of was creating a Wi-Fi smart switch that has a USB port built in. So that way you can just directly connect the tablet into the light switch and the light switch is a smart switch. Also, I wanted to create a smart switch anyway because that's what you guys wanted to, as well as I'm not really a fan of the Sonoff touches. What are, I forget what they're, the Sonoff touch, we'll call it the Sonoff touch. Not really a fan of those because they're so big and you can't, like if you have three switches next to each other, you can't do it because it's so big and they have like a faceplate integrated, not a fan. So what I want to do is create our own smart switch that also has a USB port so we can connect the tablet to it. And so this is, this is just all planning. I haven't gotten too far into it, but I found these things. Let me know your opinions. I'll probably start another thread on Discord. And so this is a AC to um, five volts at three amp converter. So that means we can even support up to a Amazon Fire 10. And so with that, we can easily power the Amazon Fire 7 as well as the smart switch part. So like the relay, the ESP. Uh, I also wanted to do a touch capacitive button on it. So that way, just like the Sonoff, the Sonoff touches, you can tap it and turns on and off. So uh, this is also AC. Um, so those of you that have more experience with AC PCBs and stuff, love to get your input on all of this and also like to get your input on these things i got this on aliexpress which actually a quick side note about aliexpress um i started getting sales tax like how many of you guys are in the u.s and have also starting to get sales tax charges on aliexpress i remember all through i've been on aliexpress for a couple years now i'm a diamond member which is the highest highest level on aliexpress um so I've been using it for a while and then I placed an order a couple weeks ago and it started, said sales tax. I was like, sales tax? It's it's a Chinese company. There shouldn't be any sales tax. 
but they're starting to charge sales tax now, so there's another. I mean, parts are still cheap, so it's not that big of a deal, but. But still, it's still an extra cost, but it's still cheaper than buying anything from the U.S., but it is what it is. Uh, those of you, if you are uh, do buy stuff from AliExpress and you want to support the channel, on the Discord, there's a my affiliate link for AliExpress, and if you use that, it helps the channel out tremendously. Um, there, I also have my Amazon affiliate link there, so you can buy the stuff that I feature in the videos. All right, so let's let's see what you guys say about this. Is the wall solid or plaster? Um, Paul, what do you mean by that? My walls are made of drywall, and then in the drywall, there's plastic enclosures for the light switches. Can I watch this live stream if it stops? Yes, the live stream will be available after it finishes live. I'm planning on being on till, I don't know yet. Maybe a smart switch with a real LCD that can also call scenes or zone or some other stuff. I mean, next scenes are cheap. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with this. This I don't remember if this is the same display that Hasp, Hasp panel or I think it's just called Hasp. If Hasp uses, if you guys haven't seen those videos, but basically you replace a switch with this. It doesn't control the switch or anything, but it's just a display in the wall and you can tap it and do stuff. These are pretty cool displays and they have... A nice um, IDE to make all the things, make all the buttons and stuff. Uh, let's see here. Sonoff RF. It's a regular basic, but has RF 433, so you can get a button or touch switch that controls it via radio frequency. No wires needed. Just put the Sonoff basic in the fixture. All right, Tyler. With the Sonoff RF, what's the what's the power supply on it though? Because you need at least two amps for Amazon Fire tablets. Melissa says, yeah, I noticed too. Yeah, eBay too. Yeah, you're right. eBay as well. They charge sales tax. Can you put a link in the chat? Sure. For, actually, no. If I, if I open Discord, then it'll. I need to figure out this live streaming. I, I'm, not, I'm not as good as Dr. Z's in this live streaming. I only do this stuff once a month. Yo, Aaron. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it so much, dude. Oh my God. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for the $5. He said, thanks, Matt. Thank you, Aaron. A smaller PCB that converts AC to DC 5 volts. I've looked into that a little bit. Now, I'm no expert by any means, but Thomas, if you know how to do that, please join the Discord and show us how to. Because, see, this the only thing that bothers me is this coil. The, this coil part, or the transformer, as well as this transform, I don't know if this one's a transformer. I know this one's a transformer, but this one right here, I don't know where to get these two. I know how to get the capacitors and stuff. That's not a problem. It's just like the transformers and all the stuff with coils. I don't know where to get that stuff. So if you know how to do that, please let us know. Um, I think the idea of a smart light dimmer you talked a while ago should be put on the shelf at least for a while. Do a smart switch first at least. Yes. Uh, yeah, eventually we'll do dimmers and stuff because I like controlling lights is one of the biggest things. I'm not really a fan of controlling, like, uh, having smart light bulbs because you have a switch anyway, so you override the power going to the light bulb, so it's pointless. Uh, so yes, eventually we'll do more switches and stuff. And that, that's why I want to reach out to you guys. If you guys can help us and we have like three or four people making PCBs and stuff, we can expedite all of these projects and stuff faster. And so we can pump out more videos so that way I'll just be making videos and videos and videos and you guys will be helping me make the devices and uh, we'll be like designing them together and it'll just be like one big community. And so we all put in the effort into it. Those are just some ideas I had. Uh, William said Hasp HA Switchblade. Yes, you're right. Home, uh, home Automation Switchblade. Check out, at jo check out Jonathan at Superhouse. I did. He... I started watching his channel before I created my own channel because those of you that don't know, I originally started on my Matt Kaczynski channel. I started doing the smart home stuff, but then I started to, I started another channel because Matt Kaczynski isn't as like a good of a channel name as MK Smart House because if you read MK Smart House, you know that's smart home related content. So I, I've been watching Super House and his wiring and stuff. He, it's so awesome. The fact that he 
he like tore out down his whole house just to like put in home automation. It's crazy. Too bad they couldn't do it into like TV show. Um, BK made a couple of video about the has panel with open app. All right, guys, if you guys want information about the HA switch plate, uh, and open app, check out BK's video. I actually saw that video. That's right. I saw that video and I commented on it. So shout out to you, BK hobby. You're also a, a long time supporter of the channel. Oh, and thank you BK, by the way, for telling me, cause I DM'd you on Twitter. Thank you for telling me which profile to use with the Zuzi plugs. I've sent a link for a power supply that could be interesting for you in new devices. Thank you, FCA. Tried finding a switch with USB port on it to wall mount it so a cord not coming. Do they allow USB ports on the back side of a switch? Not code, I think. See, I suppose. But having it, so you have this box, right? And then the USB port is right here. So you'd plug it in and then you'd put the actual switch over it. So it's sort of like sandwiched in there but it's like still freely so you can pull it out. So what I think is if I can get it so you just slide it in and you never have to take off the switch. So if you want to take off the Lux mount with the Amazon tablet, you just simply take off the front of the switch, unplug it, and then you can put your normal, the front of the switch back on. So that's that. Um, would love to help design PCBs for the channel. Shout out to you, Lewis. Uh, if you want to help, go ahead. Uh, go to the Discord. What do you think about Home Assistant, Home Assistant versus OpenHab? So, Home Assistant versus OpenHab. This is this is this is very tricky because I'm currently using both, but like at some point, right now, before the MQTT 2.4 binding, I would have said Home Assistant is really good and a lot better than OpenHab. But now that MQTT 2.4 came out on OpenHab kind of moving me back to open hub because the fact that I only primarily use MQTT devices. I don't even use, yeah, just MQTT devices and Belkin devices as well as the IP cameras, which I can do all of that through the paper UI. So I can do almost everything I want through the paper UI. The only things that I don't like about OpenHab is the fact that to update OpenHab itself, you have to do that through the command console. So you have to SSH into OpenHab. But with Home Assistant, you still have to do practically everything through the configuration files, which is something that I'm, the fact, it's it's such a hard topic to discuss because OpenHab, the things that it has, it does well, uh, especially with this new MQTT 2.4. So it's a really hard decision. You, it's kind of like, it all depends on what you're using. Now, one of the prime examples that I have with why Home Assistant is better than, or one example of why Home Assistant would be better than OpenHab is it has a lot of packages built in. Like Home Assistant, with these um, Tuya plugs, I literally just had to go into the configuration.yaml file, write Tuya, colon, and then username or something like that equals, and then my email, password equals, and then my password. And bam, it already synced to my Tuya account. It was so easy. Three lines, three lines. I actually talked about this on my Twitter. So if you're not following me on Twitter, I also give uh, things that I'm working on there. Three lines of code. And I had this Tuya plug connected to Home Assistant. Now in OpenHub, I had to do a bunch of things. And it still didn't even get connected. So thank God that, um, not, not being religious or anything, but like, Thank you that fact that they came out with how to flash these with Tasmoda or else I would not be able to get these connected to OpenApp. Just my little, little input. Oh, and also IP cameras, a lot more difficult in OpenApp. In Home Assistant, you literally just type in um, a camera or something and then the type of camera. So I did uh, MPEG-4, the IP address to the camera, boom, done, IP camera in Home Assistant. I'm going to be showing you guys how to do it exactly, but that was just an example. OpenHab, what a pain. What a pain. Like, I did it through the paper UI. I was trying to, trying to, trying to. I couldn't get it to work. Like, it was... All right. Uh, DIY stuff that is on mains voltage is not uh, up to code anyway. This is also true. I mean... 
But yeah. Uh, what is MQTT 2.4? So MQTT 2.4 is OpenHab's new MQTT binding. Because before, the only way you could do MQTT is if you manually installed Mosquito, which if you use OpenHabian is a lot easier. You just do install MQTT, blah, blah, blah. Well, you have to manually install it through SSH, and then you have to install the binding, do the configuration file, and then uh, also do your items file. So that was MQTT 1.9. Now that they released MQTT 2.4, you can do everything through the paper UI. So you go to miscellaneous first, and then you install the embedded broker, then you go back to bindings, install MQTT, and then when you go to services, you can go ahead and set up all your MQTT devices, just type in their uh, state, their state topic and their input topics, and you can do it all through the paper UI. Video next week. All right, um, where am I? Catch you later, people. Time for bed. See you, Paul. Um, I'd love to help designs too, guys. If you think, shout out to you, Jacob. You guys want to help? Discord. Man, if we're gonna have this many people doing PCBs, we can get a lot more done on a lot more devices. Uh, recently started using Lovelace as well, and I'm loving it. Yeah, Lovelace is pretty cool. Um, the fact, the only thing that I don't like is how there's like a default panel. Well, I guess Paper UI does the same thing. But the only thing that I will point out that I don't like about Home Assistant is the way that they do their automations and rules. Like with Home Assistant, you have to do call service, do this, do this. Whereas in OpenHab, you just have a rules file, so you can be like, when this happens, do this. So it's like a simple if then statement, which I kind of like, see, like each, each system has their pros and cons. So it's a really hard conversation to have. But if you're completely new to uh, Linux and you're not too familiar with it and you don't know like command line and stuff, Home Assistant all the way, because you can do so much in the actual user interface of Home Assistant or I should I should be saying Hasio because that's what I'm using. In like Hasio, you can do every practically everything through a web browser. I've actually never had to SSH into my Hasio. That's actually saying a lot. So if you have no command line experience or anything with Linux or Raspberry Pis and stuff, Home Assistant all the way, super easy. All right. Um, do you have to flash with Tasmoda for Home Assistant? Uh, if you're talking about the Tuya plugs? No. You can be using the Tuya service. You just have to use your username and password. Uh, I got the Tuya local API working. Guy from he. Really? Huh. Good for you, dude. I couldn't figure it out. I even asked on the forum. I, I don't, I haven't checked, but I didn't get a response. Not my forum, the open up forum. Uh, have you looked into ESP Home YAML? It is really easy. I have not looked into it. I haven't looked into ESP Home. I've seen it. Like, I've seen people talk about it, but I haven't looked into ESP Home. Uh, Eskos. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, new topic. I need to hear about IP cameras. Haha. <laughs> we'll get to the IP camera. Um, let's see here. Uh, remember, the S and IoT is for safety. There is no S and IoT. What do you think about the Wemo smart switch? I have one. It's right there. I've been using it for about two years now. Fantastic smart switch. Um, uh, the only thing that I will point out is uh, with Home Assistant, it is you have to pay $5 a month to use their cloud to use with Amazon um, Echoes. Or Amazon, you know, you know who, and Google Home. But it's only five dollars a month because if you don't do it, then you need a bunch of developer stuff. That's the only thing that you do have to pay for per month if you go with Home Assistant, which for some people is a deal breaker. But for me, I think to set it up with uh, the Amazon Echo and the Google Home with Home Assistant, if you pay the five dollars, so easy. Uh, sweet. 
Home Assistant isn't really good for automation, but the Node-RED plugin is awesome. I need to look into no, uh, Node-RED because I've seen people use it. I've seen uh, Dr. Z's use it. I've seen um, the hookup use it. So I got to look into Node-RED. I have no experience in Node-RED. Yes, because the app is... Okay. Oops. Oh, yeah. I also don't trust, like, Chinese web services, too. Like, with Tuya, it was, like, okay. Oh, another thing I'd like to point out. With the Tuya binding and Home Assistant, I did notice it was laggy. So I'm so thankful the fact that we can get Tasmoda onto these. Because it's much quicker. It's so much easier to set up. Um, so, yeah. I If I can avoid a third-party service, I try to. Because... I would like to, if something goes down, I'd like to blame myself because then I can fix it. But if like a two year binding stops working, great. Now I got to wait till they fix it. So there's nothing I can do and it's hopeless. Ken says, I made my own cloud. Uh, do you prefer to keep everything local and keep it away from lots of different clouds? Yes, I prefer to do that. Not for like privacy concern, but just from a re reliability standpoint. Like I mentioned before, if something goes wrong, I want to blame myself and fix it myself. Uh, Lewis, yeah, I answered. I write everything in Node.js and use the Google and AWS API. Okay. Uh, so disappointed about the low amount of likes. Asking for, because I know you guys get asked for likes every single day. Um, so, but I mean... Since they brought it up in the chat, if you guys want to like the video, go ahead and like the video. It'll make the channel grow because it helps the algorithm. Also, leaving a comment and typing in the chat also helps the algorithm. Just saying. Um. By the way, you probably, but Ben is back. Yes, I commented on Ben's video. He is back. So if you guys don't know who Ben is, Ben is from Bra Automation. So he took a break for about a year off YouTube. So he has his first video. Actually, you know what guys? Go to his video, the video that he released. It's Bra Automation. And in the chat, or in the comment section, uh, write MK Smart House sent me. I, I just wanna do this for like a social experiment. I wanna see like if you guys do it. Cause I, I, don't, I have very low, low expectations that you guys will actually do it. Prove me wrong. It's a good video too. Um, local control for smart, smart devices should be mandatory. Why is your stream choppy? It gets choppy sometimes. I need to figure out the stream. I, I don't stream often. I stream once a month, but I think I need to get it better. I'll work it out. Uh, also, your internet can do Yeah. Even if I were to make my own device, I would have a local, like a local server and then it could talk to the cloud. So that way there's always something local and you can like connect to that and have it manually controlled. Like I think as much local as as much local is better. Um set a lower bit rate. Yeah, I need to optimize my stream. If you guys know how to optimize my stream and make it better stream quality and less choppy, let me know in the Discord. I'd love to talk to you and so my streams could be better. Uh, Ben's channel name is Bra Automation. Let me just write it in the chat. So that, I, I'm i doing this for my personal YouTube account, so it's Matt Kaczynski. So it's Bra Automation, B-R-U-H-H -H Automation. All right, guess, it, guess it's that time to talk about IP cameras, huh? Let's get some hype in the chat for the IP cameras because I know you guys want that. I mean, it's not like I'm going to go in detail on the IP cameras. I'm just going to give you guys a general overview because those the videos for the IP cameras should be starting probably by the end of the month. Uh, could the lag be because of text overlay? Uh, no, nah, I usually have text overlays. And I used to, it used to not be choppy, and I still had the text overlays. I just did it, Matt Lull. Shout out to you, Aaron. Uh, all right, so let's get into the IP cameras. First, I got 
So the software that I'm going to be using for my IP cameras is called Blue Iris. Fantastic software that I've been using so far. So easy to set up, so reliable, amazing software. It's called Blue Iris. Blue Iris, I don't, I don't know if it's .com, but in Google, search Blue Iris. That's what I'm going to be using. And the IP cameras I use are eScam. I said it right, eScam. I'm going to be making a video eventually talking about the company eScam. E scam because they not that they necessarily they kind of scammed me and their customer support is garbage but we'll get into that later and those are the cameras that I use don't recommend them don't buy e scam don't buy them they'll break I need to I'll probably have to hit up a company to send me some actually I've had some companies sent want to send me IP cameras so I'll have to go back through my emails but uh, stay away from e scam um, unless they can make it right because Actually, I'll get, talk about that in a different video. But anyway, so the cameras that I'm using are eScam. I have eight of them. They're 1080p, 2.1 megapixel, about 25 frames per second. And so what I needed was an NVR to record all of that so that way I can also watch it from my phone and stuff. So that is running on a server that has an i7, 6700K, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 250, 50, 240 gigabyte SSD, and it also has a one terabyte hard drive. If you guys want to see a picture of it, check it out. It's on my Instagram. Give you guys a sneak peek. So that's that computer is running Blue Iris. And so that's going to be like my big brother surveillance computer. And it's going to be always running 24-7. And a, big, a good thing about that is it's very low power. So it'll only cost, I, think, I believe somebody did the calculations. I don't remember how much. But it's super cheap to run for the whole year. So that's what I'm going to be using as like my IP camera center. Then I figured out how to get it into OpenHab and Home Assistant. And that the picture of me getting it running on OpenHab and Home Assistant is also on my Instagram. I don't want to give too much away because I want to save it for the video. But I basically used the web, I forget what it's called, something in Home Assistant. I think I used the, it was like super easy to set up IP cameras in Home Assistant, by the way. But in uh, OpenHab, I think I used like Web, Web Viewer, and then I set the um, type to MPEG4. Um, a little e-scam, e-scam. I love how Chinese companies don't raise scam is a bad thing. I have a bunch of WAN scams. <laughs> yeah, actually, let me grab an IP camera and show you what it is. Whoops. So these are the IP cameras I'm going to be using. They're from a company called eScam. And these are PoE cameras. So they're power over Ethernet. So you can either use the 12 volts here and plug them in like that, or you can just send 12 volts over here. So I purchased a uh, eight port PoE uh, network switch. So I'm going to have all the cameras connected to the network switch uh, via Ethernet and I'm going to have them run all over my house. So these are the cameras I'm going to be using. And then the pictures on my Instagram of the computer. It's a Lenovo 130 P130 SFF. It's a small factor, so it's really small fo footprint, small power supply. The CPU is an i7 6700K, so it's also low power consumption and you don't need too much RAM it's only eight gigabytes uh, Matt did you see Mycroft I have not looked into Mycroft I've heard uh, doctors these talk about it but I haven't looked into it and oh and then also in addition to the IP cameras so that's basically how the system is gonna work there's gonna be a server running blue iris all the cameras are gonna be connected to the network switch via PoE and then from the network, it's going to be connected to the server. And then we can view the server from both Home Assistant and OpenHab. As well as we're going to be using a software called RPi Serve. And so that's going to turn uh, a Raspberry Pi into a surveillance viewer. So you can have uh, connect the Raspberry Pi to like a TV or something. So I can connect it to this TV. And then I can remotely see all of my different cameras. So that way we're going to have a bunch of different clients around the house so at any point you can take a look at the cameras. Then I'm also going to show you guys how to get the IP cameras into HabPanel, 
and then as well as um, HA panel. I think so. Uh, I used a 24 PoE port switch for $100. Dang, that's a good deal. I picked up my 8 port. It's a, I think it was D Link. I'm not sure what the brand was. It might have been D Link. I bought it for like 60 bucks off eBay. I would like good IP cams. Yeah, me too. I mean, these IP cameras are okay, but um, actually, I'm not going to get into it. I need to save it for the video because. All right. Um, my wish for cameras is to have them, um, all of them showing on a TV. If movement is detected in one channel, uh, we'll set to full screen. And then after a while, go back to the overview. I want to work on something because Blue Iris has so many features. It's crazy how many features Blue Iris has. Jeez. And it even has MQTT. MQTT on an NVR. That's like all of my wishes have came true from Blue Iris. So what I'm hoping is that I can have an MQTT a message sent from Blue Iris over to Open Hab or Home Assistant. And then from there, we can Chromecast it onto a TV. So you don't even need to have like a Raspberry Pi serve running if like it'll automatically turn on your TV and it'll automatically play the IP camera. Just some things that I've been thinking about. So yes, I want it to like overlay and do cool things. Like there's so many things we're going to be able to do with IP cameras and most of it is because of Blue Iris. Now you'll also be able to use your normal IP cameras too, but I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a Blue Iris machine running. Uh, this Lenovo I picked up for around 300 bucks, which is crazy because it's $300 for an i7 6700K, 3.4 gigahertz, four cores, and I believe eight threads, eight or six threads, I'm not sure, and eight gigabytes of RAM. So it's a pretty good deal, and it's a very, very powerful NVR. And it can be loading, right now I have six cameras running, but it'll easily do eight and up. Like, I'm running six cameras right now and it's at like 10% CPU usage. I have to, I'm not sure on the numbers, I'll have to take take a look. Do you have OpenHab or Home Assistant on a VM server? Uh, no, I have them all running on Raspberry Pis. Cause I like, see some people like having one machine and then a bunch of VMs on it. I personally am not a fan. I'd rather have a bunch of little Raspberry Pis running individual things. Like I have one Raspberry Pi doing OpenHab, one Raspberry Pi doing Home Assistant, I have a, another server that runs FreeNAS, and then on FreeNAS, I also have Plex and OpenCloud. I think that's what it's called, OpenCloud. Um, and that's that. And then I'm also going to have another server, which is this Blue Iris server. So I wanted to like separate it into as many different computers as I can, so that way, if I'm working on one thing, I don't have to have all my servers go down at one time. Um, do you, okay, uh, HA dashboard, yes. Also from HA dashboard, we'll be able to see the IP cameras. Vote one from me. But Blue Iris is Windows only, correct. So uh, the server is running Windows 10 Pro. And then on Windows 10 Pro, I have Blue Iris running. Uh, let's see here, even cheaper to build a computer yourself though, no. I, not like Eskel, uh, because these are, the way this works is these Lenovo's, as well as I've been looking at uh, HP G2's, I was looking at Dell Optiplex 5040's, and the reason that you can buy these cheaper than building your own computer is because these are enterprise grade, and enterprises buy thousands and thousands and thousands of computers. So in order to sell them quick, they have to put them out once the companies are done using them, they have to sell them quick. And the market is so saturated if they put out a thousand computers. So that's why you can pick up this. This computer, if you wanted to buy the i7-6700K alone, is around $300. So I picked up basically the price of one CPU that's in this computer, I picked up a whole computer. Something like that. So basically it was cheaper to buy this. Um, you might want to get off the Pi SDs can fail and it would be faster on a PC. That's true. It is like SD cards could fail and I've actually had one fail on OpenHab. But the good thing about uh, the Raspberry Pi and 
open have as well as home assistant is you can have a backup to a USB. So like I think the opportunity of having it opportunity cost of having it on a Raspberry Pi is better than putting it onto a computer because on the Raspberry Pi I've had the ones that I'm running downstairs probably running about a year. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Maybe a year or two and they've been running fine. So even if the SD cards just went cropped like that, it's fine because I have those USB backups. So I actually have a video on open hab USB backup. It's a uh, if you look through my channel, it's the thumbnail with the hammer on it because I show like break the Raspberry Pi. And so even if it does fail, pop in a uh, the USB flash drive, the SD card, bam, done. All ready, up and running. Uh, Blue Iris versus Zoneminder. Zoneminder is terrible. Not a fan. Not a fan. The user interface looks like it's from the 2000s. And it's, I've heard very bad things about Zoneminder. Like, the only thing good about Zoneminder is it's free because I wouldn't pay for it. Uh, so not a fan of zone minder at all like yes they have bindings for open app and home assistant but i think blue iris is just a lot better and the amount of features that you can have the reliability and what's really cool about blue iris i don't know if zone minder does this but i have it so the motion detection because i only have it recording for motion detection because i don't need to see the camera recording all day i only need to see if something is moving so when it detects motion it saves it to the uh, SSD. And then I have it set that after either 30 days or seven days, it moves off of the SSD onto the hard drive. So like if anything were to happen, say somebody broke into my car or anything, I can quickly, super quickly open up the app and look at it versus if I had it running on a hard drive, then it's much slower. So you can have your fast immediate access clips on the SSD and then after 31 days, you can move it to like the hard drive. So it's really cool how you can optimize it. Uh, hard drives can fail too. Yeah, hard drives can fail. I, my personal thing is I don't recommend buying used hard drives because you don't know what can happen. Even if they're refurbished, you don't know what can happen. Like I bought a refurbished Seagate hard drive. This is also another reason why I stay, stay away from Seagate. Not a fan of Seagate. I'm a WD guy all the way. Like, I love Western Digital. I had a refurbished one. It crashed. It Something crashed, and I couldn't get any data off the Seagate. Now, the Seagate hard drive still works now after I formatted it again, but it somehow corrupted, and I had to format it again. So I lost all that data. It was really bugged. So don't, my personal recommendation is don't buy used hard drives. There is a used hard drive in this Lenovo. And I'll upgrade it into the future, but as of right now, I don't have it in my budget to upgrade the hard drive and get a brand new one. So, yeah. But it's Western Digital, so I feel better. Um, have you considered rack-mounted servers to place them in a server rack? Server, server, I did look at some Dell servers, but they take a lot of power. Like, you could get them for super cheap. Like, you can buy a Dell server for like 150 bucks but they take a lot of power so the money that you're gaining by not spending on like a more expensive computer you're paying an electricity bill and it's like the amount of electricity you're paying for the power is not good and also like server stuff is more expensive all right you also put a battery backup for the raspi normal power surges messes up sd cards okay this is one i actually did just get a Backup power supply. I just need to uh, get a battery for the backup power supply. So w I will eventually have a. It's so bad. I, I feel so bad for saying this, but I don't have a battery backup right now. I know you guys are going to roast me in the chat. You don't have a battery backup. You're going to cro your, corrupt your uh, micro SD cards. I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Zone Minder sucks. I didn't want to put it like that. But I mean, now that you did. Uh, iSpy versus Blue Iris, Blue Iris all the way. I looked into iSpy and it just didn't have that many features and it wasn't as compatible. Matt, I have to go eat. All right, Aaron, it was nice having you in this live stream. 
I spy is uh, pretty crappy. I'd like to upgrade to Blue Iris. Yes, uh, I highly recommend it. I love Blue Iris. It literally, I say literally a lot in the stream, but it took me, it was so fast to set up Blue Iris. And also, they have a trial version. So if you want to test it out, then uh, it's free. You have it free for 15 days. It just says Blue Iris evaluation on all the IP cameras. Now, I will like to point out is the evaluation copy, it'll take more of your CPU because it's putting those overlays. So don't use that as a comparison for how much CPU it's using. Get the full license. And once you get the full license, it'll speed up Blue Iris because it doesn't have to limit the features and put the evaluation copy on it. That's one thing that I learned from reading the forums. Why not use Motion OS on a Raspberry? Um, I haven't looked into Motion OS. Blue Iris app from I for iPhone looks like it's from 2008. Yeah, the the iPhone app. I actually, yeah, it's. We'll watch the last rest later. All right, Aaron, just remember the timestamp that you left. Uh, don't ever buy used HDD. I am a WD guy as well. Yeah, see me, see. Matt Matheson, me and Matheson have the same ideas about hard drives. I tried Zominder and Blue Iris. Zominder kept filling up with error message. Fifty dollars for Blue Iris, and all my IP cameras work flawlessly. Best money I spent, and works, works, works. See, take it from Zeke Properties. See, he agrees with me. Like Zone, all the other ones can't compare with Blue Iris. Windows, I hate Windows. Okay, I'm not a fan of Windows either, but. With this Blue Iris server, you set it up and you forget it. You don't have to touch it again, so you don't actually have to use Windows. With Blue Iris, you just have to download it from the internet, set up Blue Iris once. You don't even need a monitor. Actually, you might need a monitor because you need to power it on. But if you run it as a service, I still need to look into that, actually. But still, it's a set it and forget it type deal. Like You set up Blue Iris once, and you're done. You don't even have to touch it again. I've seen people do it in VMs, but in VMs, some of them, they say it's laggy. Seagate and WD are so similar, it's just a coincidence. The reliability is exactly the same. I mean, okay, I've had a couple Seagates fail, so. And then I've had a couple WDs that actually, no, didn't fail. Uh, but it, a server is faster but I don't need faster so why why do I need a server trust me trust me uh, Matheson I've looked into like all like the different um, situations or different outcomes that I can have like having a server versus having like this computer and for what I need this is the best price per dollar per performance that I needed and this is actually even overkill for what I need all right uh, gotta go. All right, CS go. I would use it if it ran on Linux. Like I said, set it and forget it. You only have to use it once. Uh, hi Matt, what's up, Wad? Blue Iris should make a Docker image. True. What happens with Windows updates? You don't know how to answer that. Uh, can you send a link to your discord? Uh, what would you what what link do you want on my discord Lewis? Are you planning to do a video on how to turn on an Android tablet to open hat panel? That would be awesome Yes, that is After the fully kiosk video. That's actually the first step to getting hat panel on an Android tablet Get an Intel NUC um, I forget why didn't I get a NUC? Uh, because I believe they don't have as powerful CPUs. And they're more expensive for what they are. It's either It was either because they didn't have a powerful enough CPU or they were too expensive for what they are. All right. So uh, that's number six. So we are down to number seven, guys. The Q&A portion. If you guys have any questions, uh, this is the portion. Uh if I don't get too many questions, we're just going to end the stream. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit to uh, ask some questions. But they are low powered. But they're not powerful enough. So what's the point of being low powered? I did, I did, some, I did some research. I mean, 
If the Intel NUC works for you, go ahead, use the Intel NUC. But for what I did, and I looked at the Blue Iris uh, current systems because it shows all these systems. If you install the this special Blue Iris plugin onto your computer, it'll share your specs that you have of your computer and how many cameras and how good it is. So basically like a benchmark on their website. So that way other people can see like what hardware is good. And also I talked to a uh, developer at Blue Iris and they said they're going to be working on a hardware guide for choosing the right hardware for Blue Iris. Will you switch to Home Assistant full time? Um, I don't know. I kind of like... Like right now, OpenHab is my primary because I've been using OpenHab for a long time. So it's like, it's really hard to step away from OpenHab because what I'm used to and what I'm the most comfortable with, like I'm still not that comfortable with Home Assistant. Granted, it's very easy, but I just can't let go of OpenHab. Like there's something, I have an attachment to OpenHab. But from like my friends that are now getting to like smart homes and I'm going to be helping with them with smart homes, actually eventually we're going to be having a whole series how we're turning a house into a smart house. Uh, I don't know when this is happening, but we're gonna literally start from the ground up. This is actually a huge spoiler. So those of you that have made it this far, how long have we been streaming for? An hour and 12 minutes. Those of you that have gotten this far, this is a spoiler for you. We're gonna be doing a whole series, kind of like a TV show, not like an official TV show, but like I'm gonna be like showing you guys from taking a house from nothing, no smart technology, to like getting a hub, doing light switches, blinds, thermostats. We're gonna be converting a whole house into a smart house, doing IP cameras and stuff. So it's a future series. Have you tried the Shelly one, the competitor for Sonoff? If yes, which one is better? I have not uh, checked out the Shelly one at all. The main reason that I haven't checked out the Shelly is because I'm not a fan of not buying things that are in the dollar sign because like I went on the Shelly website unless I was in a different language or or a different country but it was all I think it was in pounds and so I, it also sold out at one point too and I don't want to buy it from Amazon because it's too expensive so I have not checked out the Shelly one I might eventually if I get enough people that tell me to check out the Shelly one I, uh, I might get one but as of right now my video schedule is pretty full oh that series is going to be cool when is it coming out i don't know yet because that house is still uh getting work done to it so it's literally going to be a fresh house and we're going to be converting it i'm so excited for it like we're going to be granted the house already has a security system so we're going to be retrofitting the security system and making our own security system kind of like i think it's called connected but bigger because connected doesn't have that many inputs uh, which so like for their house they would need to have two connecteds which I don't want to have two of the same device so we're just gonna have one big one but that's I'm getting ahead of myself uh, might be by the end of this year or next year I know we we just started this year but that we got a long way to go for that house and it's not my house by the way it's someone else's Uh, hey Matt, let me know. Oh, you guys, you guys will know. I'll make a big introduction to the series. Just ask them to send you some. Shelly is awesome with that. They even invited a German smart home YouTuber to their factory. All right, I'll I'll reach out to Shelly. I'll see if they'll send me one. Uh, we'll see. I I think I was watching Doctor Z's in the hookup. Um. Uh, live stream from CES. I want to go to CES so bad. I'll probably go next year. I really want to go to CES. That's what that's been one of my biggest dreams to go to CES. So and they had like this uh, USB. I don't remember if this was Shelly or a different company, um, but they had like this little USB with an ESP32, and they like oh it was for detecting people in the room. A uh, long time. Not it's time goes by fast. The series will come faster than you know it. Uh, is the way to secure communication when using MQTT with ESP8266? Um, unless you have hackers on your own network. Because here's the thing with MQTT. You can have authentication, but personally, I think it's pointless because it's all on your local network anyway. So unless somebody's physically sitting on your local network, 
then I would encrypt it because if like when it's on your local network, there's nobody else. So you don't really need to worry about somebody else like hacking your MQTT. But if you have it going to like an external MQTT server, then I would authenticate it, put a username and password on it. Or Arduino with Ethernet Shield. I have not looked into the Ethernet Shield on the Arduinos. All right, if you guys don't have any more questions, I use authentic, authentic, I use MQT authentication, but yeah, it could be pointless. Yeah, like I knew about uh, authentication since I started, but I didn't see a point because it's all on local network. Now, granted, if I did it so I port forwarded my MQTT server and like had at somebody else's house, say I have a blinds control there and I want that MQTT device to talk to my personal MQTT server at home, then yes, I would do an authentication. So basically, I only recommend doing authentication for MQTT if it's gonna be accessed from, if that MQTT device is gonna be accessed from outside your network. So say you have a remote MQTT device and it's gonna connect to your home network through uh, the WAN, then I'd recommend uh, authentication. So if it's not at your local house, then use authentication. Uh, there's MQTT over HTTPS. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, there should be. There's a lot of op in MQTT.fx, which is the uh, software I use to see MQTT commands. I believe there is H. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, do you recommend smart smart switches or smart lights? smart switches all of the way because with smart lights you have a bulb but you still have a physical switch so that physical switch you turn it off boom light bulbs go light bulb goes off and you can't control it from your phone so that's uh, that's that so for example for me the biggest thing that i love about having a light switch a smart light switch is if i don't have my phone i can still turn it on and off from the switch and then say I turn it on from the switch, I can go to my bed, pop open my phone, turn off the switch. So that's why I like the light switch is better because you can use manual control as well as Wi-Fi control. Uh, just joined your Discord. Thank you. Thank you for joining the Discord. I, I'd love to have like more people in the Discord and so that way we can all be talking, we can all be like sharing what we're doing with our smart homes, giving other people ideas, uh, just, Overall, having a good time. Basically, it would be like a big group chat. Smart lights have their place, though. Yeah, smart lights do have their place. Like if a uh, if uh, a device doesn't have a switch, then a smart bulb is good. I have MQTT server in my home, but I'm connecting another MQTT from somewhere, and I'm using user and password. But these are in plain text when you run Wireshark. So is there a more secure way? Oh. Mm. See, authentication is not like cryptography and authentication is not not my strong suit. So I appreciate I appreciate like you asking the question, but I'm not too sure. Unless you have Yeah, I, I don't know how to answer that one. Ask it on the Discord, maybe somebody else in the Discord knows. Because right now it's live, so, but we have people in the Discord that know more. I try to keep everything local. I remember the, the day a few years ago I saw Ben's first video and I installed Home Assistant right away. I was trying to get one of my lights to turn up, and IFTTT was slow. Yes, IFTT what is slow. Uh, I've also heard the Logitech Harmony Hub is slow. So. Some some things are slower than others. Rentals lack of neutral price. What do you mean? Oh, rentals lack of ne neutral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I get it because I read your comment before. Yeah, if you do have a rental property, like if you you're renting from somebody, yeah, I guess smart light bulbs would be good. But even then, the property owner is responsible for the light bulbs so you still have to ask to swap out a light bulb 
because you you don't own the light bulb, so you can't just swap it out. But usually, most property like owners are are nice and they'll they want to satisfy you, so you stay. So th they might install a smart switch for you. Any more questions? How long have we been An hour and 20 minutes. All right, so it's looking like, oh, actually let me check the Discord, see if you guys said anything over there. Oh, also, shout out to, I don't remember. That's awkward. I was going to shout out, actually, no, I was going to shout out Thread River, but I, I remember I shouted him out before. Oh, dang, you guys are talking a lot in here. All right. Actually, how many of you would be interested in a Twitch stream as well? Because I, I I was watching Dr. Z's video and, or live stream, and he showed how you can have a Twitch notification in Home Assistant. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, but other than that, let me check the... Live chat one more time. You need to ask to swap out light bulbs. In Germany, we can install smart switches, change light bulbs and stuff. Yeah, because the property owner is responsible for everything in there. So, like, the light bulbs, those are his. He installed those. Like, if a light bulb burnt out, technically, they're responsible for uh, replacing it. Because they own every part of that property. So, even if a light bulb... Uh, dims out or explodes or it is broken you have to ask them to put in a new light bulb because it, it's their responsibility for you to have light in there uh, of course only when it's up to regulation do you video chat on Facebook I don't video chat on Facebook actually I should probably be more involved in my Facebook I have like 500 followers on Facebook I don't really use Facebook that much I'm more of an Instagram person Appreciate your help and thanks for your videos. Please keep it up. Thanks again. No problem, Wad. Lutron is the only thing I know that works with no neutral wire. Oh, no way. There's Because with the neutral, that's re responsible for the AC. So how could that... Unless it uses... I don't know how that works. Uh, use Restream that out. Yeah, I I'll look into that stuff. Here you have to buy your own light bulbs. Really? I don't know. Uh, please post uh, YAML for Blinds Project. The YAML, if you watch my Home Assistant install video, or like how to install Hass.io onto a Raspberry Pi server, I go over, like, if you want a Blinds device, that is literally the video to watch. It shows you how to set up the Raspberry Pi server, how to set up MQTT on Home Assistant, how to connect the uh, Blinds control to Home Assistant. So check out my how to install Hass.io uh, video. The everything is there, as well as the blinds uh, YAML. Uh, can use IFTT for notifications for YouTube. Oh, that's a good idea. That's weird. When we move, when we move, and there's often not even lights installed. You are supposed to install them yourself. <laughs> that's funny, FZA. Delete Facebook. I don't use it. Neutral at light via switch. Dealt with that. Used one Shelly to make them smart switch. Oh, that's cool. You guys are talking a lot about Shelly's. I might. I'll, I'll have to ask them to send me one. Uh, inductance, but that often only works with incandescent stuff. Oh, it steals power from the load. Oh, I got you. Yeah, my house, they're all LEDs. So if it's incandescent... If it's incandescent, it wouldn't work. Installed Shelly, Shelly by fixture to get... Oh, so that's how you did the Shelly. So you put it into the actual light, and then you have another... Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Great idea. Yes, I have Broadlink smart switch and works without neutral wire. I'm using Lutron with LED works fine. Okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, in my house, all of them have neutral, so I couldn't really apply that. Wow, this is a really bad time to stream. We only have 17 people in here. We normally have like almost 50. Or not 50. We usually have like a high number. 
Uh, I just can't dim them. Yeah. Makes sense. Because if you dim them, that's... Yeah. Makes sense. All right, guys. It's almost 8 o'clock. I'm actually kind of hungry. I'm going to go eat. I have an old house with some funky wires. Yeah. That, that's the thing. With, like, smart homes, sometimes it's, like, limited. Especially with Ethernet. If your house doesn't have pre-wired Ethernet, that can also be a struggle. Like, I can't imagine not having Ethernet in a house. Because... All, everything in my hard uh, in my house, all the computers are hardwired, so I can't imagine not having it. Almost two o'clock here. <laughs> That's funny. All right, guys. So thank you guys for watching. Shout out again to PCB Way for sponsoring this live stream. Uh, the video regarding this PCB will be out. You know, it's getting kind of late. Probably out tomorrow. Uh, it's an interesting project. It's not like a full like DIY guide. It's just something that I created in support for, um, I'm not going to spoil it, but shout out to PCB way. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to the entire community. If you haven't got a chance to join the discord, that's where we can interact and have awesome conversations. Uh, if you guys want any smart home kits to, for example, blinds, led strips that I have behind my monitors. Um, I took down the power strip because it's not done yet. Sprinkler systems, door sensors. What else we got on there? Sonoffs. Anything? Please check out the uh, mksmiles.com/shop. Uh, you know, YouTube ad revenue ain't doing too well right now, so you know, any support I can get is awesome. Also, if you want wall-mounted tablets like that, check out luxmounts.com. Uh, they will soon. I know I've been getting emails about having them in Canada. So I will be expanding to Canada soon, uh, maybe within the next next couple weeks, because I still have to get it shipped to Canada. So anyway, uh, be on the lookout if you're in Canada for Lux Mounts. They should be coming soon. Um, I think that's all the plugs. Follow on uh, Instagram, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. Uh, I think I plugged enough. All right. If you're a smart enthusiast, subscribe. If you're a smart enthusiast also like uh, this has been fun this has actually been one of the fun uh, live streams um, so yeah see you guys <laughs>